right, let's take a look at Reva Third Sister's kit. So, her basic is called No More Hiding. Or it looks like she's calling out Jedi Master Kenobi. <laughs> Putting a GL up in here. Although he's standing there with two pieces of crap. Jedi Consular and <laughs> Jedi Guardian. Okay. Where she's got, what, Fifth Brother and uh, Inquisitor, Grand Inquisitor. Only half her blade out. That's weird looking when they do that. You got this cool double-bladed thing. Put them both out. Anyways, deal physical damage to target enemy and inflict a stack of purge, max 6, for the rest of the encounter, which can't be evaded. If target enemy is already inflicted with purge, inflict ability block for two turns and dispel all the buffs on third sister. Huh. Okay, well, that's kind of a pain in the cock. Uh, special 1, Unyielding Onslaught. Cooldown 3, and it's a Zeta. Kind of looks exactly like the other move. Bink. Where this one was bink. Let's see. Run, hit. This one's a jump hit. Practically the same thing. Anyhow. <laughs> uh, final text. Deal physical damage to target enemy and recover health equal to the amount of damage dealt. Okay. For each stack of purge on the enemy, this attack deals 30% more damage. If third sister is at full health after using this ability, inflict armor shred on target enemy for the rest of the battle. Okay, so third sister does seem to be a lot better than the other uh, inquisitors. Who knows though? All the inquisitors actually sounded good and they sucked, but so far this is, uh, you know, recovering health. And then it says for each stack of purge on the enemy, this attack does 60, 30% uh, more damage. So if they had five stacks, how many can they have total? Is it 10, five? I don't know. Let's just say they had five of those to do 150% more damage. So that's, that's something. You might want to mod her for offense, and then she's hitting really hard. Special 2, Reckless Sweep. Cooldown, 4. It's a Zeta and Omicron. And she gets her other blade out. Bink, 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 bink. Looks like it hurts them and get, does something for your side. Because, see, he got, like, uh, some health over there. Something green happened to him. Uh, Grand Inquisitor. Final text. Deal uh, physical damage to all enemies and consume one stack of purge from each enemy. Okay. If all enemies had at least one stack of purge, inflict defense down and healing immunity on all enemies for two turns. Defense down and healing immunity. Well, that's a pain in the Richard, which can't be dispelled, evaded, or resisted, and all Inquisitorious allies gain 20% turn meter. Otherwise, inflict defense down and healing immunity on all enemies for two turns. So they get that no matter what, but if all enemies had one stack of purge, then all Inquisitorious allies gain 20% turn meter as well. Huh. While in Grand Arena, so here's one Omicron, all Inquisitorious allies gain critical damage up for two turns and have their cooldowns reduced by one. That's, oh, that's in addition to all that, right? Critical damage up and have their cooldowns reduced by one. That's not that juicy. You're calling this an Omicron? Not that juicy. Unique one, driven by rage. It has an Omicron. Final text, third sister, Reva, gains... 30% max health and 30 speed. Third sister takes reduced damage from percent health damage effects. That's what they always put for the uh, Galactic Legends. What the heck's up with this now? At the start of battle and when she's defeated for the first time, she gains hatred until she is defeated. Whenever third sister is revived, she gains 100% offense and defense, stacking max 200%, and 25% critical chance for the rest of the encounter, stacking 50%. Whenever Purge is dispelled during an enemy's turn, or when an enemy <coughs> uses an attack that damages more than one ally, all enemies gain one stack of Purge, max six for the rest of the encounter, and Third Sister taunts for two turns. There's a lot going on there. At the start of battle, when she's defeated for the first time, she gains hatred until she's defeated. Whenever Third Sister is revived, she gains 100% offense and defense, stacking, max 200%. That max 200%, what is that saying, though? Like, if she's dead and then came back to life, how would she have 200% max? Hmm. And 25% critical chance for the rest of the encounter. Whenever Purge is dispelled during an enemy's turn, or when an enemy uses an attack that damages more than one ally, so that would be, like, Vader, though, with uh, Force Crush. All enemies gain one stack of Purge. Ooh. While in Grand Arenas, whenever Third, Fist Third Sister is revived from Hatred, the cooldown of Unyielding Onslaught is refreshed, and she gains 100% offense until her next attack and ignores taunt effects for one turn. 
So unyielding onslaught, that was this one, right? Nope, that's reckless sweep. Unyielding onslaught was the one that, oh, you can recover health and protection and oh, the, uh, the ability to do more damage. Hmm. Um, so that's the one we just did, right? Driven by Revenge. Unique number two, Impatient. At the start of battle, if all allies, minimum three, are Inquisitorious, this character gains 20% critical damage, max health, and offense. This character taunts for two turns at the start of an encounter, and whenever an ally or enemy is defeated, ally or enemy, she taunts. So that's kind of like uh, Qui-Gon. With his leader ability, how you gain foresight if you kill anybody or anybody on your team gets killed. Um, whenever an enemy damages this character with an out of turn attack, that enemy gains a stack of purge, max 6, for the rest of the encounter, which can't be evaded or resisted. Whenever purge is consumed or dispelled, this character gains 3% turn meter. Leader, Harbored Aggression, has a Zeta and Omicron. Jeez, what is this? Three Omicrons on her? Two. Let's see. One. Two. Yeah, three. Jeez, the last one that had three at least was, uh... Cyan of Django. At least he was kind of cool. Revo of three? Like, calm down. <laughs> Leader, Harbored Aggression. Final text, Inquisitorious allies gain 40% max health, 20% offense, 30 speed, and are immune to stun. At the start of the encounter, and whenever an Inquisitorious ally is defeated or defeats an enemy, all enemies are inflicted with 5 stacks of purge, max 6 for the rest of the encounter, which can't be resisted. Alright, so far I'd say that her leader ability probably does sound the best out of all of them. They gain 40% max health, 20% offense, and flat 30 speed and are immune to stun, all the rest were kind of basic, like I always thought, who would you choose? None of these are really like outstanding over the other ones, but this one's not bad sounding. The amount of like bonuses to the stats though that she can offer, <laughs> every single one of her moves was like, oh you gain this, 20% here, you gain this back here, you gain this here, oh leader, you do this. <laughs> her stats are like two separate things, they're gonna have the one base stats, to look at but then you have all this manipulation once she gets out on the field <laughs> anyways uh, inquisitorious ally attacks always score a critical hit if able against enemies with at least five stacks of purge whenever an enemy recovers protection or gains protection up all enemies lose 2% defense stacking max 50% for the rest of the encounter and now, while in Grand Arenas, whenever an ally or enemy is defeated, all Inquisitorious allies gain defense penetration up for two turns. Hmm. Whenever Purge is dispelled during an enemy's turn, that character, excluding Galactic Legends, gains Death Mark for two turns, which can't be dispelled or resisted. Whenever Purge is dispelled during an enemy's turn, they gain Death Mark. Okay, what is Death Mark? That's um, that's the move that's kind of like a forced taunt, right? It's like you place it on them. They didn't taunt or anything. We're just choosing to go after you. <laughs> Edit. She's a tank, not an attacker. The image and copy has been updated to reflect that. Apparently, originally, at 1 a.m., <laughs> it said she was an attacker, which almost would make more sense though. I don't know why they make her a tank. I feel like, I don't know, maybe they make her a tank because of how she's resistant. You know, she gets killed and comes back to life. I guess it's not really an attacker thing. That would be kind of tankish. <sighs> Anyways. Her right, her power revels several galactic legends in Grand Arena. Boom. <laughs> I don't get it. Why are you saying boom? Is she an attacker or a tank? A tank. Cool. Very cool. Yes. <laughs> Sounds like she's going to be another savage type of deal. We'll be neat to see her firsthand. A tank. She attack, she protect, in between, she eat a snack. 
encounter several GL, but without their counterpart, like Cat Mall. What? So they're saying that the GL is still be better? I mean, it's supposed to be. The GL should be better. Actually, I see a potential counter with JMK Cat. No promises, obviously, but she has some mechanics that'll, that they'll struggle to deal with on defense. Cause. Cogwizzle and Guinness Yonku Mangasi Isin Bik Leap Gorasesk. Yeah! You can be an attacker and still tank for the team. Will the kit still be relevant by the time people unlock it? That's the real question. Oh! That actually is a pretty good question. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. It's gonna take so long to unlock it, at least for like my guild. It's gonna take so long. Like, yeah, as of now, she sounds decent. But, you know, in six years, when we finally get her unlocked, is it still gonna matter? Hmm. I don't know, because, like, Key Adding Moon, Mundi, he takes forever to unlock. And at one point, yeah, he was pretty juicy and you wanted to unlock him. But now, ever, ever since Key Adding Mundi came out, there's been GLs, there's been um, even characters that aren't GLs, like Gas and Jedi, uh, Jedi Knight Luke and all that. So it kind of makes Key Adam Moody less, uh, I don't know, less, less juicy than he used to be. So I feel like that might be the same thing with her. She seems juicy now, but by the time you finally can actually unlock her, maybe not so much. R7 requirements. Why? Just why? Because they're dick bags. That's why. And that. Ching ching. Just yes, best comfort in the thread. Yeah. Also, I think that the death mark from the lead will make her good as well as the stacking offense, defense, and double revive. However, <coughs> bounty hunters should be able to beat this team with Zamami and or a lead for a quick contract and disintegrate on her. Would have been nice if the revive couldn't have been prevented. Wait, what? What is that saying that the? She could be disintegrated and still come back, or that if she is disintegrated, that's it. There is no more revive. She thick. <laughs> Reva was soundly defeated by Darth Vader and couldn't take down the Lars couple. CG. Hmm. Yes. This character should be the one that supercharges Inquisitors to the point of challenging GLs, not the Grand Inquisitor. <laughs> I know. But why is CG doing that? Because there's a ridiculous push for Reva. I mean, they, they tried so hard to market Reva like nobody's business. They made the lightsaber that failed that nobody wanted. They, for some reason, it's all about Reva. But nobody cares. But here's CG doing the same thing. Yeah, they're a little bit late, but they're also putting her as like a special reward character and giving her three Omicrons in her kit and all this. This game does not and never will follow lore. Simply a fact. Yeah, it's kind of true. It's it's in between. It does and it doesn't. I mean, at the same time, they do make up a lot of stuff just to be able to make a game. I mean, come on, Stormtrooper Han. They come up with a full kit for a character that's in the movie for <laughs> five minutes. And it's just a disguise to go save Leia with. And they, and they make it a full character. Or who else is kind of ridiculous that they came up with a full kit for? Even Rose Tico. How do you come up with a full kit for her? <laughs> so, I mean, there's that. <laughs> Anyways, that's all I got, and that's all the community's got for now. Uh, so, yeah, Reva coming to the game in such a dick area that pff, I know I'm not going to see her anytime soon. As much as I hate to say it, though, she does sound pretty good, actually. And these Inquisitors suck, but it sounds like under her lead, they actually could be decent. But, uh, yeah, that's all you got. So until next time, I said see ya.